Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Cooper's Empty Lifestyle. And on this episode, we're gonna go spear fishing out in beautiful Puget Sound, Washington. Let's get out in the water, let's get some fish so we can stock up the freezer. And we're gonna cook a fish at the end of this episode. Stay tuned for that. Enjoy. Other than Nia Bay, Washington, the Puget Sound, Washington area has about a month of spearfishing each year. During this short window, I was able to go for three days. In this video, I'm going to show you what I was able to get while spearfishing in these three days. Day one of spearfishing. We're gonna go down into the deep waters, down this anchor line, we're gonna find the reef, and we're gonna search around all the crevices and holes for these lean cod and cabazons. The visibility is amazing. We're seeing all the white plumes and enemies, the black rockfish, you know, all the little starfish. We need to find the lean cod and cabazons. During spearfishing season, you can get one ling cod and one cabazon each day. You can also get green lings, but typically they're a little too small. Sometimes you can find some big ones worth shooting. As I'm looking around searching, I see a cabazon that I just spooked. He swims up into the anemones. Let's follow him and see if we can get him. As I'm searching for the cabazon, I just so happen to see a nice sized link on. I'm gonna take the shot. Not quite the perfect shot, but I'm gonna wrestle the fish, get it on the stringer, and ease its suffering. Well, I got my link cod for the day. Let's go find a cabazon. Looking down between all these boulders in this hole, I see a cabazon. It's probably the first one that I saw. Let's try to get this cabazon. So I got my cabazon, I got my lean cod. It's time to head back to the anchor line, start our ascent, let everybody know that the fishing is good here since I was the guinea pig and had to go first, so no one else would waste any air. So day one is complete. I got my link cod and my cabazon. Now let's start off with day two. And yet again, like always, I'm the guinea pig, so I go in first to see if fishing is good. Being 
the first one off the boat also comes the responsibility of checking the anchor. Make sure the anchor's set, make sure it's not caught on anything, make sure it's not tangled up. You want to be able to retrieve the anchor by pulling it back up while you're on top of the boat. The dive lights I've been using are made from Orca Torch. They're actually pretty reliable, pretty good, inexpensive dive lights. I've been very happy. I'll put their link in the description below. I'm also using a spear gun that is a JBL 38 Special with a sticker on it that has a ruler. As I go up and check this hole, I see a great size link cod. But it turns around and swims further into the hole. Let's check to see if there's any openings that's going to come out of. That's one of the great things about spear fishing. I can go down and just pick which fish I want to shoot as long as it's within the correct size limits for this area. I honestly think that it's probably the best way to select your fish. Yeah, you can go fishing with a fishing pole and line and tackle but then you're just stuck with whatever fish you get. You have to do catch and release over and over and over. With spear fishing, you just go down there, look for the fish you want, and shoot it. Some say it's cheating to go spear fishing while on scuba. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. We're not in the Caribbean, we're not in Florida. We don't have 100, 200 foot visibility. The visibility on this video, it's great these three days. Typically, when you're spear fishing out here in the Puget Sound, you'd be lucky to get five, 10 feet visibility, if that. We're fighting the currents to get down to the deep dive sites, wearing exposure suits to go get fish. That's how we spear fish here in the Puget Sound. This was a nice cabazon. Typically, I want to get a little bit bigger, but these are still some decent sized cabazons. In the same spot where I got the cabazon, I see a lean cod poking its head out of a hole. It's not the same big one that I saw earlier, but it's still a nice size one. We're gonna take this lean cod. I'm trying to get the most perfect shot possible. I don't like it when the fish has to suffer. I wanna get a good kill, or I'll have to wrestle it to ease its suffering with a knife, and then get it strung. I'd like to also add that with spear fishing, it's probably one of the cleanest ways to go out and get your fish. You're not putting out big nets, where you're trapping everything getting caught in the nets, you're not doing line fishing where you're catching multiple fish. You're just picking out the fish for your limit for the day and then going right home. got an amazing lincod and cabazon for day two. We're going to go back to the anchor line and start our set, let everybody know it's good to go, and then we'll start off on day three of spearfishing. Day three, like always, I'm the guinea pig, so I'm first to jump off the boat, and go down, and see if the waters are good, and the anchor is set. Visibility is amazing today, like the other two days. This is pretty rare. Typically, visibility has been terrible these past few years. Sometimes you're literally spearfishing in two feet bits. There's a lot of lean cod out today, but despite them being all legal size, they're just a little too small. I just think that maybe one more year and all these lings will be perfect size for next year. So now we're going to look around for that perfect size ling. Here's a ratfish that's just cruising along the bottom. There are other scuba divers out there that believe you should only take pictures and videos, leave bubbles, and not touch anything. Well, I'm going to say this. We're not at a popular dive site. We're somewhere where you have to use a boat to access. And as human beings, we are omnivores. We eat plants and meat. And today, we're diving somewhere that you can only get to by boat 
and we're going to get our meat. And believe it or not, the money that we spend to go fishing, a portion of that money gets put aside for conservation projects that the state runs. If you don't believe me, just Google it. I can't remember the last time I saw this many link cod just hanging out. I mean, but they're all just a little too small. In a distance, I see a ling cod sitting out in the sand, pretty decent size. I'm going to sneak up and just drift right over it and get a perfect shot. On my way back to the boat, Crossing over the rock pile, I see a cabazon. I'm gonna try to take the shot. I'm gonna sneak up on this cabazon, and take the shot. Then I'm gonna wrestle it, ease its suffering, get it on the stringer. Then I'm gonna head back to the anchor line, start my ascent. Let everybody else know it's good to go. And that's my limit of cabazon and ling for the day. I can't wait to have some of this fresh fish. There's just something about the taste of fresh fish versus something that's been sitting in the freezer for several months. Sadly, I was only able to get three days of spear fishing in this year in that short window, but these three days were amazing. The visibility was so surprisingly good on all three days i'm just amazed when i think back and look at all the weekends that we had poor visibility i got my link cod i got my cabas on each of the three days it's great we're gonna have some fish in the freezer to help get us through until the next fishing season next year these are just beautiful tasty fish my family is going to be very happy that they're going to be having some fresh fish this year now that we have the catch portion of the video complete, let's move on to the cooking portion of this catch and cook video. So since then of spearfishing, we were able to uh, clean out the cabazons and the link cods, get them flayed up, you know, deheaded them because we're going to save the heads for fish stock for like chowder and stuff. Uh, but we are going to cook some of the link cod right now. So we're going to try this tempura batter mix, extra crispy. So we have the mix mixed up, sit on a little bit of ice. We got some pieces of ling cod. She's got the oil going. So we're going to cook up this ling cod. Are you excited, honey? Sure. You How want to see oil trick? Sure. Show me the oil trick. Okay. So to test if it's ready. You take a chopstick and you put it in. See, no bubbles? Okay. Okay, now we'll do movie magic and we and cut and come back and I will show when it's ready. Ooh. Asian method. Ooh. Little tiny bubbles coming up. Mm hmm. That's how we know it's ready? Yeah. Usually there's more, but I'm impatient. Let me use tongs or? Yeah, I'll use it to flip it. Smells so good. Mm. Try a piece? Hmm? No, I'm 
No, I'll, I'll drown mine in vinegar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let it cool down, cut it up a little bit. Come on, you want some? Hmm? You need some. Mmm. Very good, very good. Well, that was a fish catch and cook. Just had some link cod after we went out and got some link cod spear fishing. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, make sure you hit the bell notification. Check out our merchandise. Thank you everyone for helping make this video happen. Going out on these days to do some amazing spear fishing with some amazing friends. Sadly, one of our friends is no longer with us, who was a big influence on all of us as we would go out and go spear fishing every year. Mark, we will always miss you and all the good times we had doing diving, especially going spear fishing out in the Puget Sound and Nia Bay, Washington. You will forever be missed. We will continue diving, we will continue exploring, and we will continue spearfishing in your honor. Thank you, Mark. We really appreciate you and miss you a lot.